saying congratulations on this single. We've been playing it now for about a week on our show, and we've been getting great feedback, so congratulations. Oh, wow. Thank you. That's really awesome to hear. Thank you very much. So this is a really deep and personal track. Tell us a little bit about sure. this track and how it came into being. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, back in 2018, I lost my best mate to suicide. Um, and, yeah, just sort of made me realise that, like, I've always played music, you know, over the years since I was young. Um, but I sort of lost a lot of um, interest and I, I had trouble writing lyrics and things for a while. And then after that, it just kind of made me realise that, like, the older you get, the more things you go through, you can kind of turn them into positive things. So I decided to turn my mate's death into a song to help other people and to see if they would resonate with it. Did you find it difficult to sit down and write? Because I, I lost a partner as well, and I've never been able sure. to I've never been able to write about it. I've always tried to a number of times, and I've never been able to put it down on paper. So did you find it very difficult to, to write about it? It's that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so to me, it was it actually gave me the tool that I'd been missing because like I grew up playing music. But I always had a struggle with writing lyrics because I don't think I had anything to talk about. I had a pretty good upbringing, to be honest. And then when that happened, it was sort of like trauma in my life for the first time. And then it sort of gave me something to talk about and something that I'm actually quite passionate about and do other things around um, awareness, mental health awareness and things like that. But um, I think I've, I used to struggle with it a little bit when I was younger. Um, but just over, you know, like, speaking up and networking with other people, it, it just gave me uh, all this inspiration to start writing about my stories and, you know, friends who have, who have taken their life and things like that. So it actually gave me more ammunition to, to put down on paper. You, know, you mentioned that you've been playing music your entire life. What kind of music did you grow up listening to and what kind of music got you into wanting to play guitar and sing? Yeah, awesome question. So for me, uh, a band called Blink-182, <laughs> who yep. I uh, have tattooed on my arm, I yeah grew up um, yeah grew up just sort of loving that band. I loved that they were just themselves and, you know, made jokes on stage and they all seemed like good friends and it just seemed like, you know, playing in a band would be an awesome thing. So I grew up listening to punk and metal and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of metal. Um, but I've always loved my acoustic stuff as well, like City and Colour, um, and uh, Dustin Kensu from Thrice. Um, so yeah, um, and even some of the older stuff like Bruce Springsteen's first record, Nebraska. Um, but yeah, just like anything that gives me chills. But yeah, Blink One Eight Two was definitely the reason that I got into music. Now this is your first single. So what are your plans from here? Are you going to to concentrate on music now for a while and and try and bring out an EP or an album in the future? Hundred percent. So I actually, um, I actually just stepped down from my. I work, my background's corporate sales, and I actually, after you know, quite some time in sales, um, have decided to back off a little bit. I'm still doing it, sort of part time, but I'm using the rest of the time to focus on um, music and my other podcast called Blokes and Banter, which is talking to men around Australia about mental health and just trying to give back a little bit and do things a little bit more meaningful. That's a a really huge step. Was there something that, that sparked you wanting to to take that step? Yeah, I think just like the nine to five, like it was great. It's great having money, you know, money, money buys freedom, but it definitely doesn't fulfill you. And just over time and lessons and things, I've just realized like you have to do things that you're passionate about. Otherwise, you'll, you'll age quick. <laughs> yeah. And you're working with some very, very talented musicians. Tell us about some of the musicians that you're working with and has that been difficult over this whole COVID period with lockdowns and stuff as well? Yeah, so I moved from Sydney to Brisbane in February with my wife, so I'm originally from Sydney. Um, and yeah, since we got up here, I've just been ducking down to the Gold Coast to a studio called Altitude Studio down there, shout out to Alex from Altitude. And he's, yeah, he's worked with um, some of the guys from Dead Letter in the past, Dead Letter Circus and... Um, ben Deneen, who played drums on Broken Man, was touring with Jared James for a while. Yep. 
um, and they helped me. Yeah, they really helped me in the studio as far as like structuring the song and like, yeah, definitely got some really good advice. But yeah, I was lucky enough to not have COVID as an issue just because, yeah, just stuck down the, the highway down to the Gold Coast from Brisbane here and it's only an hour. So wasn't too bad. Yeah, got it done. <laughs> so when can we expect to hear some more music from you? Is it something that you're hoping that you can do more over summer and get out there and do some shows as well? Yeah, so my main focus at the moment is I'm working on my live performance. Um, I've been playing open mics around Brisbane once a week, uh, but I will be, yeah, in the new year focusing on my live performance and I want to put on more of a, uh, work on more of sort of like a performance where I can um, chat about these subjects throughout the performance and things like that as well and even incorporate some visuals and things as well. Awesome. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Blokes and Banter as well. It's such an important podcast. Tell us a little bit about Blokes and Banter and what people can expect to hear on that. Yeah, so to be honest, Blokes and Banter, it started during COVID. So I was down in Sydney at the time. Everyone went into lockdown and, you know, everyone was figuring out ways to, you know, um, make the time go by quickly, I guess. So I just decided that a lot of people might want to chat in that, you know, with COVID and everything. So I set up Blokes and Banner. I started DMing people on Instagram and um, I had the Barefoot Dutchman come on who's walking for, from Kansas to Sydney right now for men's mental health. Barefoot, he's ex-military and some other actors and ex-police officers and stuff come on and just chat about like their time and, and the police force and things and mental health and stuff like that. Um, so it was a way for me to talk to people, but it was also like a, a way for other people to connect as well. So Awesome. And where can people find Blokes and Banter if they want to sit down and take a listen to it as well? Yeah, for sure. So just on yeah, your Spotify and the Apple Podcasts app, um, and I believe it's on a few others as well. If you go to the um, Blokes and Banter Spotify page, I think I've got other links there as well. Awesome. And we're going to play Broken Man on our show again in a moment. But Andrew, how can people support you at the moment? That's one of the things that we know during COVID. It's been so tough for artists. Is there any way out there that our listeners can support you and help you at the moment? Just share the video because there might be people out there that will connect with it. Maybe they're going through a hard time and maybe hearing the song, they might be able to resonate and know that they're not alone. And this is the type of track too that people will listen to and they'll know exactly what this track is about and have probably had those feelings themselves. Have you had very many people reach out to you and say, hey mate, I, I've been through that, I know I know what that's like? It's interesting, I woke up the other morning and I've never seen my like Instagram inbox so full. It was a little bit overwhelming actually because I'm not, I mean there's that fine you're not, I'm not a counsellor, I'm not a trained psychologist, I'm just a guy putting out music, so I have to be careful at the same time with people that are reaching out that are, aren't doing too well, but you just refer them to places like Lifeline and things like that. Um, but yeah, it's been, apart from that, like it's been awesome, lots of good feedback, and it's definitely, um, it's definitely touching a few people, that's for sure. Definitely. Well, Andrew, we are going to play the track again right now on our show Thank you so much for taking the time to to talk to us today. And is there anything you'd like to say to everybody out there before they have another listen to Broken Man? Oh yeah, look, just check in with your mates. You don't know you don't know what people are dealing with under the surface. Just check in with your mates. 